Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today's video is all about science fiction written by women. As I'm filming this, it's Sci-Fi September, so this seemed like the perfect time to do a sci-fi recommendation video, and sometimes we overlook some of the incredible science fiction being written by female authors. So in today's video, I have 16 great sci-fi books to recommend to you, all written by female authors, and I'm going to be dividing them up by subgenre category. For those of you who have a very specific type of subgenre that you like to read in science fiction, I will put chapters in the video so that you can click through to see the recommendations for whatever you're most interested in, or you can watch all the way through. The four categories of recommendations for today's video are space opera, post-apocalyptic, interpersonal or romantic, and genre blends editing and wanted to make a quick note I forgot to mention all of the books in this video are adult sci-fi titles. I decided not to do any YA specifically in this video just because that opens up a whole different set of books. So everything is written by women and written for an adult audience. One note I'll make for the interpersonal category is that a couple of these are science fiction with a heavy romance plot. A couple of them are just more focused on the interpersonal relationships of the characters more so than the larger space elements. With that said, let's go ahead and start with my space opera recommendations. I'm going to preface this by saying that these are the closest to the idea of a space opera. People do sometimes get a little nitpicky about what does and doesn't count as space opera. So I'll just say that all of these are books that have a major focus on politics in space, survival elements, or exploration. So not space opera by every definition, but I feel like they all kind of fall into similar categories. And I had to make some decisions about how to divide this video up. My first recommendation is a very underhyped book that I think is incredible, and the second book is finally going to be coming out early in 2023, so this seemed like a perfect time to recommend it. This is Unconquerable Sun by Kate Elliott. This is basically gender-flipped Alexander the Great in space, and it is incredible. It is action-packed, the pace moves very quickly, a lot happens, there's a lot of politics, there's a lot of interesting gender things happening because our main character is a woman who is kind of like Alexander the Great, but in space. So if that sounds up your alley, I would definitely recommend this. It's high on the action, but it also has really good characterization. My next suggestion is Up Against It by Laura J. Mixon. This is a reprint of a book that came out in 2011 with a new introduction by James S.A. Corey, authors of the Expanse series. And what's interesting about this is that it came out the same year as Leviathan Wakes, which is the first book in the Expanse, and they have a lot of similarities while I have not yet read the Expanse series, I have seen the first couple seasons of the television show, and I can see why these are considered so similar. It's very interesting, another one that has a lot of action going on, and it is following a bunch of characters living on a space station and trying to survive. There's AI, there are attacks, there's politics going on, there are women in leadership positions. Overall, I think it's really interesting. It's a lot of fun. It's got a lot of depth to the ideas that it's exploring, which is right on point for the type of book that it is. My only caution would be that if you are sensitive to depictions of gender and gender identity, this doesn't do a great job of depicting people with gender fluid identities. They do exist in this world and they're not a huge part of the plot, but I was a little uncomfortable with the way that that was handled. Other than that though, I really enjoyed this. I think it's a good time it's interesting, and if you enjoyed the Expand series, you might give this a try. Next is the first book in one of my personal favorite sci-fi duology. It may not be entirely for everybody, but I really love it, and it is critically acclaimed. This is A Memory Called Empire by Arkady Martin. Now, in comparison to the last two books I suggested, this is not an action-driven plot at all. It is quite dense, it's focused a lot on politics and linguistics, it's much more character-driven, but it is for sure a political sci-fi novel exploring concepts of empire in space. I think that the second book is even stronger than the first one, although not everybody agrees with me. There is also queer representation and through the duology a sapphic romance that develops as kind of a side plot. The second book is also 
interesting because it's partly a first contact with alien species story and explores philosophically ways that we might approach that. I just absolutely love this world. I love how unique and detailed and complex it is. So if that sounds good to you, definitely go and check this out. I think it's beautiful. I really, really hope that we get more in this world. I think we're supposed to eventually, and I, I will be immediately picking it all up. My next recommendation is also a bit of a modern classic, and this is a newly released bind up. It is Worlds of Exile and Illusion by Ursula K. Le Guin. This is part of the Tour Essentials line, and it is a bind up of her first three short novels that are really interesting. They are loosely tied together but can be read as standalones. And one thing that I think is worth knowing about Ursula K. Le Guin is that her background was as an anthropologist, and so you can really see that in form the way that she does world building on these different planets with these different cultures and people groups. Really, really interesting. I would call this as a whole space opera, and it's really fascinating to see early on in her career the ideas she was playing with, how good the writing was already, and just how creative the ideas she was coming up with were. So if you haven't tried Ursula K. Le Guin, this is one place you could start if you want to try some of her science fiction. Note that it was written a while ago, so this isn't going to be fast-paced. It's not going to be as action-driven as some other things. You have to be patient with it and recognize it as a modern classic, but I really loved it. My final recommendation in this category is a novella by an author who will also be showing up in another category. This is To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. It is a novella that is following a crew of scientists on a mission to explore planets in space, and I think you should pick this up if you were a fan of Star Trek. I feel like this novella really embodies the ethos of Star Trek, of exploring without doing harm to other places and cultures, although in this case it's not people they're encountering, but they're still taking into account what kind of a footprint are they leaving behind. It is kind of sad at the end, but I really loved it. But if those themes of space exploration and how we conduct ourselves in those situations sound appealing to you, go check this out. The next category is what I'm calling post-apocalyptic, because all three of these stories take place after some sort of major apocalyptic event or meltdown and are exploring that in very different ways. First is another modern classic. This is Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler. There are two books in this series. They are quite different from each other, but I think together they are very powerful. And I think think is a lot of where people saying that Octavia Butler was prophetic is coming from. This is exploring a near future United States where the environment is going to hell, there is political upheaval, some things that feel <laughs> not too dissimilar from what we are currently actually experiencing. And this first book is journal entries from a young black woman beginning as a teenage girl who ends up inventing a new religion. And it's really, really interesting. Book two is quite different tonally and in structure, but I loved it even more than I loved the first one, and together I think they're really interesting. Just know that you have to be in the mood for something that's going to feel bleak and is going to feel like shockingly possible given, given the world we are currently living in. So, you know, maybe not a great one for a time where you're already feeling kind of down about the state of the world, but brilliant, incredibly written, really stands the test of time. The next book in this category is something that I don't think most people think of as post-apocalyptic, even though it is. It's technically alternate history, but post-apocalyptic. This is The Calculating Stars by Mary Robinette Kowal. It's fascinating because it's set in an alternate version of the 1950s where a huge asteroid hits Earth and it's an apocalyptic event where the people who survived it now need to figure out a way to get into space and figure out how humanity can survive. So it's like the space race but post-apocalyptic and it follows a group of women who are going to become astronauts. I have not continued with the series yet. I need to because I really loved the first book. The first book I will say is more about the aeronautics and earth side of things. They don't actually get into space but I think later on in the series they do. That said I would call this post-apocalyptic science fiction and it's very interesting. My final suggestion in this category is Remote Control by Nnedi Okorafor and I would say in 
general, there's quite a few things by Nettie Okorafor that kind of fit this premise where she is exploring something futuristic. She is an African futurist writer as well, which is interesting. And in this case, I would say that what's apocalyptic is maybe the impact of capitalism and this isn't the only book that she's written that is exploring that I would say that Noor is like that as well but this novella specifically is following a young girl who like how to say this people call her death's daughter because for reasons she's ended up with this ability to kill people around her or kill living things around her and she is growing up in Africa and so it's interesting because there are larger concepts at work and there's a lot of nuance to what Nnedi Okorafor is doing but the story itself feels like a combination of myth and coming of age story that is very centrally focused on this one character. So it's an interesting little novella but I think in general Nnedi Okorafor is such a great writer in modern science fiction exploring really interesting ideas and worth a read if you haven't picked her up yet. The next category is interpersonal or romantic science fiction and all of these are books that really focus on the people in the stories or maybe in one case the artificial intelligence person in the story. A couple of them are more heavily romantic, the others are not so much romantic but really more focused on the characters than on the plot or the setting. First up, this is where you are going to find Becky Chambers yet again. Becky Chambers is known more for this kind of cozy interpersonal relationship driven science fiction and if you like that she is incredible about it. I really enjoy these books. Now that said, if you need a plot to enjoy a book, if you need a clear beginning middle and end or purpose to enjoy a book she may not always be for you like like some of her novellas maybe give a try to but uh the long way to a small angry planet is basically just hanging out with a quirky crew of a spaceship <laughs> as they do some stuff. Like some things happen, but that's really not the focus of the book. The focus is the people. It's diverse, there are queer characters, there's people with lots of different backgrounds, which I appreciate, and I loved it. I found it cozy and charming. Some people hate it <laughs> and think that it is super boring. So it really just depends on what you enjoy in your science fiction. But this has been compared to the show Firefly. I think it is an apt description, except that this has less plot moving the action than Firefly. So if the idea of Firefly except more hanging out with the characters you like sounds appealing, definitely go check this out. A Psalm for the Wild Built is also cozy sci-fi and this one I maybe could have put in the post-apocalyptic section. It's really interesting because it's the first book in a duology. They're pretty short but they're exploring post-post-apocalyptic time periods, right? So there's been a climate apocalypse, there was a, a robot uprising, and now we're set far in the future where humanity has learned how to coexist with nature in a sustainable way, and robots who achieved sentience are now coming back and wanting to connect with humanity again in a kinder, better way, and the main character we're following here is a tea monk. And I really, really love <laughs> this duology. I love the second book in the duology even more than the first one, but again, while I think the scientific ideas that are undergirding it are pretty rich, the story itself is very cozy and very just driven by hanging out with the characters and not by plot. So depending on your taste, Becky Chambers in these books may or may not be for you, but if that sounds appealing, I would definitely recommend checking her out. My next recommendation is the only one I don't have a physical copy of, although honestly I probably should remedy that and go ahead and get one. This is Light from Uncommon Stars by Raika Aoki. I really loved this but it is an unusual book and it is another one that is quirky and really about the characters. It's a debut novel by a trans woman author and it follows a trans teen girl who is a runaway and a musical prodigy as well as an older woman who is a violin teacher who's made a deal with the devil and a family of aliens who are fleeing political violence and hiding as humans running a donut shop. <laughs> so that's the kind of vibe you're getting. It is wonderful and charming and I'm so pleased for Rika Aoki that this book that you know I think is hard to pitch 
has gotten some notice because of being on awards lists. So definitely go check it out. It's another one that is more cozy, more interpersonal, definitely quirky, but really wonderful. Do note that if you need content warnings, maybe check those because there are some traumatic events that are explored in the book. Three more in this category. Can you tell that I am a fan of this kind of science fiction? Because I definitely am. First up, I can't make a video about women writers in science fiction without talking about Murderbot. I mean, we all love Murderbot. Most of us love Murderbot. People with taste love Murderbot. It's okay if you don't, but I love Murderbot. Anyway, um, Martha Wells is the author of the Murderbot Diaries, and the first novella in the series is All Systems Red. I think there are currently... I want to say five novellas and one full-length novel following Murderbot, who is a biological AI who hacked their governor module and wishes that they could just live their life streaming soapy shows, but instead they have to deal with humans. And this series is just delightful. It is another one that is more about the characters and each novella kind of has a different type of plot it's exploring. One of my favorites is the latest one, Fugitive Telemetry, which is a murder mystery plot, and you're seeing Murderbot solve a murder mystery. It's they're, they're just a lot of fun. So if you haven't tried them, give them a shot. I think they are excellent and really funny. That being said, humor is always quite subjective and not the same things are funny for different people, so it may or may not work for you, but I think worth a try. Lastly, I have two sci-fi novels that are much more romance heavy in their plots. The first one is The Best of All Possible Worlds by Karen Lord. This is a really interesting book. It has a very, very slow burn romance plot to it very slow burn. But it's also exploring some really interesting ideas from a anthropological perspective, I would say. There is a species of people whose planet was destroyed and most of them have been wiped out and they're now refugees on another planet. And we are following the leader of the refugees and the government bureaucrat slash scientist who is assigned to work with them. And this is kind of a, an episodic story, which is unusual. It follows a series of episodes of them going to different places and talking to different people and exploring different parts of the world that they're on. But throughout there is this very slow burn romance that develops. I really like this. I heard about this originally from Angela over at Literature Science Alliance. This is one of her favorite books. I don't love it as much as she did, but I did think it was really good and really interesting. My final recommendation in interpersonal or romantic science fiction written by women is, of course, Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell. If you know me, you knew this had to be on the list. I love this. This was one of my favorite books I read last year. It is a sci-fi romance that is an arranged political marriage between two men who are opposites. There is also a sort of murder slash political mystery plot to this, and I was such a fan. This is the kind of book that's interesting because it is really about half sci-fi, half romance, and it's the kind of thing that I could see being a good crossover title. So if you're a romance reader interested in getting into sci-fi that you find daunting, this could be a good one to pick up. If you're a sci-fi reader who wants to dip your toes in the romance genre, again, I think this could be a good one to pick up. I really loved it. One thing to be aware of is that it does deal somewhat with domestic violence and the effects of domestic violence, but it doesn't occur on page. Uh, but that kind of trauma is explored, among other things. But absolutely love this. Cannot wait for the second book set in this world, which is coming out very soon. Moving on to my last category, these are my genre blends. One of them is a sci fantasy, where it reads like fantasy for book one, but the further you get into the series, the more you realize it is science fiction that feels like a fantasy novel early on. Then I have one that is a sci fantasy horror blend and another one that is a sci fi horror blend. So if you like genre mashups or if you like books that kind of cross between genres a little bit, these books should be on your radar. Had to change the camera battery, but let's go ahead and talk about those genre blends. The sci fantasy I mentioned is the first book in one of my all time favorite trilogies period. This is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. This trilogy is 
brilliant. I could gush about it, and I have. In fact, I have a whole playlist of live shows where I did a read-along second time reading the series. I think that her work is incredible, but this series is definitely sci-fantasy. What's interesting about it is that book one reads more like a fantasy novel, but again, the further you get into the series, the more you realize that this is science fiction and it is deeply grounded in sci-fi ideas. So if you haven't tried N.K. Jemisin, I think this is a fantastic place to start definitely worth a read if you haven't given her a try. She's incredible. If you're looking for some horror with your science fiction, one option is Escaping Exodus by Nikki Drayden. This is a weird book, but it's so good. It's very strange, very unusual, and definitely does have horror elements to it. So there is gore, there is body horror, there's like some weird stuff that happens but it's also kind of brilliant and really interesting. So this book follows characters living on a ship that is carved out of a giant living creature that flies through space. And they have kind of a symbiotic relationship with it. It is also a matriarchal society, so it's exploring what it would look like if a lot of gender norms were flipped, including problematic gender norms. So the types of oppression and microaggressions that women often face, you see male characters face in this book, which I think is really fascinating. There's a lot of political conspiracy, there is some romantic subplots, there are queer characters. It's just really fascinating really inventive and I need to read more from Nikki Drayden because her brain is really interesting. But this for sure has horror elements to it, which I haven't heard a lot of people say when pitching it, but uh, it's, it's worth being aware of. <laughs> And lastly, of course, these books had to be on my list of things to check out if you want sci-fi written by women. Another series that either will or will not be your cup of tea. People kind of love or hate these books, and I get it, but I'm a big fan. That is Gideon the Ninth and Hair of the Ninth and the rest of the series. I haven't read Nona yet. It is the latest book. I am very excited for it. But Tamsin Yor is a really interesting writer. She's very experimental. She's doing experimental things with literary style, and she's very good at what she does. I think reading Harrow is what cemented for me how smart this series is, but I fell in love with Gideon because the humor really worked for me, the mashup really worked for me. This one is technically sci-fi, but it reads more like a fantasy horror with a closed circle murder mystery plot, which is kind of unusual, and then Harrow the Ninth is horror sci-fi. So you, you kind of get a bit of a flip from book to book, but I really, really love this series, and I think it's at least worth a try. Uh, it may or may not work for you, but I know a lot of writers deeply respect what Tamsin Muir has done because she's just so talented, so whether or not you like these or enjoy them, you may love them, you may not, they're really interesting and really smart. So there you go. For anybody trying to say, yeah, women just don't write science fiction or there's not much out there as far as sci-fi written by women, clearly that is not the case. This is just what I could quickly grab from my bookshelves and one other off the top of my head. I didn't even go searching deeply to find this list. There are so many incredible books in science fiction being written by women. I, this is barely scratching the surface, but hopefully this at least gives you a good place to start and gives you some different subgenres depending on what you like. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. And for your question of the day, recommend a favorite sci-fi book written by a woman that you have read. It could be on this list. It could be something that I didn't mention, something you're a fan of. I would actually love to know because I really enjoy sci-fi written by women. I think there's a lot of incredible stuff out there and they're doing some very interesting things with the genre. So talk to me in the comments down below. If you guys like this video, it does help if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.